What is going on everyone? It's Kelly here and as you can see I am all geared up in my wetsuit about to go diving. Um, it's probably only about 10 feet right here um, down here in Key West with a good friend of mine Hunter. We're gonna see if we can't pluck a few bugs out of the water just to wrap up lobster season. The end of lobster season is midnight, the last day of March. Um, of course, the typical Florida weather, our springtime is usually normally, usually normally super windy. We did have a cold front come in about four days ago, so the ocean is super rough. But I do wanna show you guys something. We have a little bit of a surprise visitor that we picked up floating on the surface of the water. We drove past it and I looked at it and I'm like, it looks like a coconut with four legs. That's, ex that's exactly how I described it. So we turned around, sure enough, it was what we thought a dead iguana. He was upside down, floating, belly all distended, like he was dead. Sure enough, the boat gets next to him. He sparks up and looks at us and he swam immediately to the boat with every ounce of energy that that iguana had, climbing on the boat like stick the net out for him literally just climbs into the net like he was so thankful that we were there but i'll show you guys him right here we have him in our kill box right now he's just recuperating uh, i'm not sure what we're gonna do with him yet <laughs> i just know we could not leave him stranded out here in the water like as a human being i just can't do that so all right i'm gonna stop talking and get in the water and hopefully we can uh a few bugs and I really want some lobster so let's go find him. horseshoe crabs and I don't know if they're dead or if they're molts but there's so many of them down there this is so cute this I'll little guy this. Let's see. he's just born and he just swam right up and swam right into my hand ah! <laughs> don't bite me maybe he doesn't know how to bite yet uh, pretty sure sharks are born with that ability look how cute a little baby nurse shark. Aww. I want to put him in a fish tank so bad. <laughs> Look at his little whiskers, his little barbs. So <laughs> cute. I mean, he's like fresh. He doesn't even know he's supposed to swim away from you. There's a lot of um, horseshoe crabs. Like, I don't know if they're molts or dead horseshoe crabs. They may be molts. I, I, I don't But I never I see live horseshoe crabs. It's weird, I don't get it. I see a few, but it's normally, they're in very skinny water, like when you're walking a, a seawall or something right there in Key West, there'll be quite a few, uh, but they're in a little bit of water. Yeah. Oh wait, I guess I'll just pop them right overboard. Yeah, you just lay them in the water. There he goes. Come on, little dude. How cool. I wonder, I wonder if they lose their spots when they get older. Cause he had like they, black mostly, spots. He looked a lot darker than a, a, a a bigger nurse shark, didn't he? Yeah, the bigger nurse sharks are like a sandy color, you know? Yeah. He was very dark with those spots that I had not seen on uh, mature sharks. I've never seen a nurse shark that small. I've seen one a little bit bigger. It was in an abandoned crab pot. He must have got in there and obviously got stuck. I was, but uh, no, that was a small one I've seen. Yeah, so. the smallest one I've ever seen. 
he had to just been born they're probably born in the mangroves um like uh lemon sharks do i'm guessing and uh, the current maybe pulled him out here a little bit and uh he swam into the first thing he saw that looked like hey can you help me and uh of course. Apparently there's there's a lot of animals today that are swimming to us saying, hey, can you help me? Can you help Iguanas, me? Iguanas, very baby nurse sharks. Except legal lobsters. Except let, the day's not over. The day, the day is, is not over. We're going to get them. We're going to find them. The wind's a-blowing. We have some lionfish ceviche, courtesy of Captain Hunter. Uh, first oh. thing you do with the lionfish, kill them and put them in ceviche. Kill them and put them in the DJ. Or a fish taco. They're just, they're good. They're probably one of the best white meat fish in the ocean. Literally. And you would never even think that because when you think of lionfish, I feel like a fish tank. They are so good. Their meat is so white, so flaky, no fishy taste. What's, I think even when you freeze it, there's, there's no, no fish taste at all. I think because they don't have a bloodline. Like, yeah, there's got to be something like that. Um, So we went ahead and moved, changed spots. Um, it's about 19, 18, 19 feet right here. And there's just a bunch of rocks and ledges. We've never explored this area before. So we anchored up. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in, free dive it a couple times. The biz is really bad. So I can't really free dive it too much, um, but I'm gonna do that. And then after I free dive it, Hunter's gonna get in with the tank. I brought my BC and tank as well, but I don't know if I'm really feeling scuba diving right now. Um, we'll see. So we're gonna explore this new spot and y'all will see it underwater. mangrove snapper. I'm about to shoot him. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. Look at that. Free diving in this current. Kelly nailed him. <laughs> Got him? <laughs> well done, Kelly. Thank you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to follow the line down, and then you throw it in. Um, I'm going to try to swim up and around the boat so the capture, but if the the float gets into the, you clear it for me, okay? You're going to have to pull in the tag line to clear okay. it. Because that's a long line, you know, and I won't, I won't know down there. Yeah. You don't see the bottom until about a foot and a half from your head, like hitting the bottom when you dive down. And uh, when you're on the bottom, you have about six feet of viz uh, in front of you. So definitely a lot easier to scuba dive this um, so you can stay on the bottom and really look for lobster. But I just kind of got lucky. I, uh, I guess I throw this in now. I think he's on the bottom. Just see the dive flag in. So he's going to stay with that flag. He's going to hold on to the bottom and just work the bottom, crawl around the bottom around this general area. I'm just watching this dive flag making sure it doesn't get tangled with anything. Hopefully he doesn't go under the boat. Seriously. <laughs> uh, don't go under. All right, I think he's going straight. Um, it's super important when you are in the boat watching a scuba diver that you pay attention to the bubbles because sometimes they can let go of a float 
or a flag or anything that they're holding onto, um, which then you'll be watching the float on top of the water. But if the diver let go of it or if it broke off on something, the diver's nowhere near the float and the float will start drifting. So it's really important to just try to maintain eye contact with those bubbles in the water because that's where your diver is. All right, so the current was ripping. Um, Hunter couldn't swim back to the boat, so I had to pull an anchor, drive to him, pick him up. And we went ahead and reset on some shallower stuff, some rocks that were really coming up to a peak. So he's in the water right now, I'm watching the bubbles, watching him dive down and just kind of staying on top of him. But he's probably only, only like nine feet of water. All right, the wind picked up. It was it was rough. It was like pushing 3:30. I had Finley at the house, and I'm like, you know what? Let's just call it. We're gonna go back out tomorrow. Um, but we have some stone crab traps to pull. They've been sitting probably for about five days. We have a bunch of bait in the Maverick right here. We got some barracuda. We got some pig's feet in that bucket. Um, so when we pull the traps, we're gonna rebait the traps. That way we can let them sit out for five more days and then check them again. So hopefully. We'll get some decent stone crabs. What, in the Kuda stomach? Yeah. So, something really tiny over here, we're not sure, but we've got a whole lane, half a lane. Looks like a... Uh, Whatever that was. A that's grunt? a grunt. Uh, pinfish, pinfish and... Ooh. Something with... Uh, this really, one's already gilled and scaled for us. All right, not really sure what that was, but... Uh, that's sushi grade. <laughs> Watch the snappers have a field day. These mangrove snappers are huge. Oh yeah, I got I got the roots. Watch them go and they go. Look at them all. Look at that one right there. He's two oh, pounds. Oh, he's a chunk. Y'all, I might go spearfishing off the dock tomorrow morning. <laughs> Little mangrove catch and cook for breakfast. All right, so this should be interesting because we're actually gonna bring Finley on the Maverick. Like I said, it should be interesting. He's been on a boat before and he did absolutely phenomenal but that was when he was probably like seven months old and he's a year old now so oh by the way family turned a year old like two days ago so he's officially a year i can't believe it's been a whole year since i've gotten him family he's a whole teenager right now he only listens about 50 percent of the time and he's scared of everything <laughs> he really is a big old chicken Kelly's gonna come this way. We're gonna short, just short, short about a quarter inch. So she's going back home. Oh, uh, she's a female. You can put her back to the truck. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll leave the females in the trap. Um, we give them plenty of food so they're not starving. They'll survive. But I think that will attract male crabs and more crabs to go into the trap if there's crabs already in there, kind of like lobster. The main goal for me right now is for Finley not to get pinched by a crab because he will put his nose in places where they don't belong. We got a carcass, we got a barracuda. That's good, just give him one and a pig's foot. All it's right. Gonna great. It's getting towards the end of the season. Hi, right, Colonel Captain. Red crab deployed. Get 
All right, so unfortunately no luck in this trap. There's a lot of crabs in it, but- oh, That's a female. So the females, their underbelly, their undercarriage is very wide like this. And the males will be um, very small and thin like that. I'll show you, you can see this was broke, but this is a cutter claw. See, it's kind of sharp and serrated. Mm -hmm. And they have a crusher claw too. Yep. Now, just like your North Atlantic lobster, if you see their big claws, they got a, one side is just a huge massive claw and the other one's like a little bit more sharper, I should say. And pointy. Now this is a regrowth, uh, you know, these are two new claws. And surprisingly, these both look like cutter claws. See how they're huh. thin down here? Yeah. It's not a crusher, it's much wider in the back. So he's growing two. So this is a male, see that? See how it's a lot more narrower, the underbelly? Yeah, so those, yeah, those are two new baby claws. How cool is that? So he's uh, he's molted and he's regrowing his claws. We don't hurt the, the, the crab when we harvest his claws. They just break right off and then he'll grow up some more. Now this will probably take two or three more molts and he'll have a, another legal claw to harvest. Yeah, you can. Good at the end of the season. Ain't worth taking them in. Oh no. You gotta roll them in here. They're so slippery. I hear a couple in there. A couple, but it doesn't, it's not a huge rattle. Unfortunately, again, in this trap, we have no keepers. Check out the, uh, that looks like a barracuda skull. Maybe? What is that? No, you don't have the jaw. It looks like maybe a jack? A mutton snapper. Ah, oh, snapper? We got the pig's toes. As you can see, these these claws. Look, look, that one is uh, regenerating a claw right there, the mini one. It's kind of green. I gotta reach. It'll, 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 we're gonna drift right into it. That's what dogs do best. I see some crab movement. Oh yeah, look at those big claws right there. There we go. We probably got two or three claws, keeper claws in here. This is spooky. Oh, so many. Ah! <laughs> I got them. I feel like when I first started pulling stone crab traps, like I was just like fearless. It's been a while. It's probably been a couple years. It's spooky, man. You do not want that thing to pinch you. I've had the Jamaica uh, land crab pinch me like five times when I was catching those. I had a North Atlantic lobster pinch me when I was up in Boston. So, I've had my fair share of getting pinched by these crabs. That is a good specimen of a stone crab. You can see the cutter claw is sharp and the crusher claw. You're hilarious. <laughs> Just hilarious. I got you too. You, you pulled that hand back now, I, quick. I've been pinched. I'm not even, even messing around. The power of these critters, uh, they, can hurt, they can hurt you. Mm -hmm. They really can and they don't let go. Are you just gonna insert that knife right in that joint right there? Oop. And he releases the claw on his own. So this crab will regenerate. You do, it's claw. so, you, you haven't opened up his chest at all and his bud is still there and it will start regenerating. Yep. Dude, this is so much box that you put away. I don't know, you have to eat it. Oh, I will. I'll just go back for seconds. I just need to be able to mix it up. All right. All right. We have been whipping some work in the kitchen. We got a good old bowl of pasta. We're keeping it super, super simple. We got our lobster that we seared in the cast iron with some garlic and butter and salt. We got some chopped scallions right here. We got some lemon, we got some good old Parmesan cheese. Let me tell you, when I was little, my like go-to comfort meal was pasta noodles, doused in butter, salt, and like a mountain of Parmesan cheese. And I would just eat that religiously. Um, after you get out of, it was not super warm today. And when we get chilly in that water, you've been in the water for several hours, it gets you cold. There's nothing better than a big bowl of pasta. I mean, we're talking, feed us for some comfort food. Yeah, ultimate, ultimate comfort food. We got, where and are the claws? We got some stone crab claws. Like, They're still chilling right now. They're in here getting nice and cold so we, we can break them out. We'll oh, have yeah. those for dessert. You want your mm. 
show it with the. Oh, all right, we'll show it. Hold on, let me get a few. <laughs> little, there we go, a little razzle dazzle. A little razzle dazzle. Look at that, nice and crispy. Squeeze a little lemon over? Yeah, go ahead. Nice, some seeds maybe. <laughs> there might be a few seeds in there. We'll, we'll clean them We're up. hungry. We're like, let's get this show on the road. <laughs> so we've been topping it off with blueberries. We've been eating dip. We've been eating our leftover ceviche. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was not pretty being us. And the counter's it's a little bit messy. So it's maybe time we'll to take eat. it downstairs and eat uh, in the... Uh, in the non-messy area. All right, you guys, this video is ending. Thank you for watching. We're gonna go ahead and stuff our face with some pasta. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Leave a positive comment below. Be sure to subscribe too if I didn't already say that, but it's been a long day. Anyways, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.